Think back to Labor Day 20 years ago. You probably have no idea where you spent it. Right, but many of you do remember where you were only a few days later on 9-11. Mm -hmm. How can anybody truly forget? It was a date that really forced change. Tonight, KPRC2 Investigates Mario Diaz looks at that change 20 years later in the areas impacted most. September 11th, 2001. The events in Lower Manhattan, Pennsylvania, and Washington, D.C. that day impacting a nation to its core. Following the deadly attacks, Americans were in agreement with the response. At first, everybody said, you know, flag on our shoulder, let's move. But in the 20 years since 9-11, how have we really changed? There has been a lot of changes, um, but only for a very small part of society. U.S. Representative Dan Crenshaw is right. If you take into account COVID, the virus has changed nearly every aspect of daily life. But in the years after 9-11, the biggest difference for Houstonians is in the sector of that morning's greatest failure. The way security was prior to 9-11, and I've got videos showing what it was like on the morning of 9-11 as the terrorists were walking through Dulles Airport. It was atrocious. Dallas-based attorney Stephen Badger spent nearly 10 years as a lead lawyer in legal actions taken against airlines and aviation security companies after 9-11. Security is tremendously better than it was on 9-11. He credits the creation of TSA, a direct result of the attacks, with keeping Americans safe and changing how we travel. While we all complain about the TSA and having to take our shoes off and the secondary screening, we should be happy and thankful that our government has put a process into place that works. Safety the primary focus on Capitol Hill after 9-11, sparking innovation. Technology has advanced at a much greater capacity than it normally does. Uh, as a result of 9-11. Since 2002, Sal LaFrary has been a corporate security advisor for the developer at the World Trade Center site. LaFrary views two key acts as keeping us safer through technology. The first is the now controversial Patriot Act, intended to intercept and obstruct terrorism. The second was more below the radar, the Safety Act. They wanted companies to be able to create some research and development and develop new technologies that could be used to counter terrorism. U.S. Representative Troy Nels is a combat veteran of the war on terror. Some of these initiatives or these programs or these organizations that have been created have done a pretty decent job keeping the American people safe. Representative Crenshaw was a member of SEAL Team 3. He says the shift also changed the U.S. military strategy, one he experienced. It would be a very, very rare thing if, uh, if a SEAL ever did a combat mission in his career prior to 9-11. Uh, post 9-11, you know, you'd be doing 100 or 200 on a deployment. In many ways, we are different. But beyond the war, travel and security, Dr. Seem Shah, executive vice chair of Baylor College of Medicine's Department of Psychiatry, says 9-11 also has impacted people mentally. If there's a backpack over your shoulder 25 yards away from us, right. we're not getting anywhere near it nowadays. Exactly. Did, is that a product of 9-11? That is a product of 9-11, absolutely, because before that, we were not into that uh, uh, hypervigilant state. Dr. Shaw adds that in the 20 years since 9-11, his field has seen a change with more of a focus directed towards veterans and their mental state, which wasn't emphasized as much after past wars. Shaw also saying there are some who started reimagining the trauma of 9-11, not necessarily because of the upcoming anniversary date, but as a result of the images and stories surrounding the recent exit out of Afghanistan. One final note. Right now on click2houston.com, we have links and phone numbers for veterans who are in search of assistance as the anniversary of 9-11 approaches. Mario Diaz, KPRC2 Investigates. Mario, thank you.